In this video, we're going to configure a custom post type using the Voxel WordPress theme. We're going to navigate over to Structure, then Post Types, Create Post Type, and I'm creating a Business Post Type. So type in these three, Business, Businesses, and then Business, lowercase for me, Create Post Type. We're going to go through our basic settings. Uh, this is not going to change once we've already named it, so let's go through and upload our icon. Let's choose one that we like. We've got so many to choose from here. Let's just use this one. Export configuration. We won't need to do this unless you're going to uh, migrate it over to a different site. Post submission. We want to enable it so that people can create their own businesses. We want the admin to review it before for approval. And then uh, there's the other option is post it immediately if you want to, but I want approval. When the existing post is edited, apply it immediately, review the edits, or you cannot edit your post. I am okay with them immediately being published. Always update the post slug when the post is updated. So if they change the name of their business, it's going to change the URL up there as well. If you keep that turned on and they're allowed to delete their post, um, yes or no. Uh, I'm going to keep it as a no just because if you delete your business, then you're going to delete all your products. Timeline, this is going to be if you want them to have the timeline for like a, like a wall, like posting and social media, things like that. I'm going to turn that off. I don't need that. We won't need to worry about any of that. Settings, reviews, we want reviews to be enabled. If you don't, you can click on disabled. If you want the visibility of the reviews, depending on what you want, post author only, followers only, logged in users, or everyone. And then we're down here is where we can create our categories for all of the different ratings that we want people to rate the business on. So you could put things like uh, responsiveness. You could do that, upload, upload an SVG for that, required things like that. You can go through and add all of them that you want. You can go through here and name all of these as well as give them a, a particular color that you want it to be. So, you know, red for poor, excellent, we could do green, you know, yellow, you get the idea, things like that. And then review settings if you want it to be numbers or if you want them to be stars. If you want them to be able to receive messages to that post, um, then that will be where you want to turn this on. The map, uh, for right now, until you create your fields up here, you can just leave this as it is. We can come back after we've added a couple of images and we can choose an image if we can get an image from a field, but for right now we can't do that. Permalinks, if you don't want it to be forward slash business, forward slash post title, you can change that to be whatever you want here. Expiration rules. If you're going to have this in a membership to where they subscribe and they add their business, you don't need to worry about this. This is really good if you're going to have people do like events or job posts, things of that nature. And then revisions are all of the different changes that you made to this post type. And other is if you want to enable Gutenberg for this, if you want to um, have a post excerpt, and then if you want to do the personal data export, um, it would be included when people request it. Account deletion, delete post with user. So if you delete the user, do you want to um, delete the account, things like that. And then archive, you don't have to worry about that. So let's go through and we're gonna create some of our fields. Let's rename this to business information. Just so we have that, we're going to put a title instead of title. We're going to put business name, legal business name. And we want to have that there. That's going to be their title of the post. Uh, description, business description. And I like to max that out at a thousand characters. I like to give them basic controls. Advanced controls just gives them more ability to do um, customizations to those uh, texts and things like that. If you want to be able to allow short codes, you can turn that on and then required is what I would recommend for a business description. 
Let's see. Business location. Turn that on. I want that to be required. Let's go through. Um, if you want the email to be different than the user email, you can put a new email there. We're gonna hold off on logo and cover image and gallery. Let's put website required and then phone number. And I want that to be required as well. So this is basic information for the business. Let's add a new layout option and we're gonna do a new step. This is going to be business imagery. This is where we're going to add the logo and the cover image in the gallery. So business logo, please upload a square photo for best results. Recommended size is 500 by 500. And then I let people upload large files because it's going to compress it anyway. And you can always choose a default image too. So if somebody does not upload their logo, this is going to be what shows. So for example, let's do this one. That's going to be what shows if nobody, if they don't upload a, a, um, a logo for some reason, if it, you know, bypass the required field. Cover image. Everybody knows what a cover image is. I'm going to name it to a cover photo. We're also going to put that 10,000, make that required. And I'm also going to put this one as just this right here. That's just a, a placeholder for now. This is good if you want to import listings. It's going to have these placeholders there. And then we have gallery. So photos of your business. So this could be the photos of previous work, products, etc. And again, we're going to make that 10 megabytes. And we're not going to make that required just because they don't have to do that. Let's go over to some custom fields. So eventually we're gonna be adding a product to it just so that people can start adding products. For right now, let's go to their business hours. We're gonna add another step. This is gonna just be additional business information. So hours of operation and it's not required. And let's make it required. I'm going through this as, uh, as we are for the first time. So we have a bunch of these custom items here and some of them are repeats. So like phone, email, location, work hours, things like that. You can add multiples of those things. Um, for right now, I like what we have. We're gonna add taxonomy, business type. Since we don't have one, we're gonna create a new one. business type, it's gonna be a pop-up versus inline. Pop-up is kind of like what you see here. Inline is like what you see here, where it's gonna be like check boxes and things like that. And that's gonna be required. Let's hit create. And now we have business type there. Business type. Let's save these, because I love to just save it afterwards we're done. So before we get into the templates, we're going to move over to filtering. And so these are going to be filters that are going to be used when you're filtering the post feeds, when you're adding filters to search forms, things like that. Keywords is just a search form. So I'm just going to do search businesses. And then we're going to have it search a legal business name and a description. And then I'm going to upload an SVG. And we're going to go through because I've got a bunch from the voxel guide. Here's a magnifying glass. Got that. I want people to be able to search by location. It's going to be the address. 
we're in the US, so we're gonna put miles. Default radius is 10, we'll do that. Upload image, sorry, upload SVG. Let's see if I have, here we go, location. We want that. We also want people to be able to um, do by open now. So if they're open now, hours of operation. So it's gonna be the local time for each person. And then we'll go through and we'll upload a clock, which I know I have one. Somewhere. There it goes, this will work. And then I also wanna add a couple of other ones. So we want to be able to filter by author, and this is going to allow us to show the post, so the logged in users posts inside of their dashboard. And that's gonna be super important if you want people to be able to, to view all of that. And if you want post status, uh, if they have the ability to unpublish them or renew them, you can also have the post status here as well. And that could be something useful to have just because. Um, so we have all of these here and we also want to do an order by. And it doesn't matter what order these are in here, no one will see them except for you. So we have an order by and I do have an order by icon. It's down here. Boom. Now we want to go over to search order. So this is going to be the order that they appear in, uh, that you're going to have to let them appear in. So if we can do by the latest submitted, best rated, nearby, and random. I like to use those. So latest, we'll leave that as it is. Best rated by the weighted average, ascending or descending, nearby, the location field, and then we have random. And I like to randomize it every two hours and not always because every time they refresh, you'll see it new. I like to kind of make it dynamic but not static at the same time. So one or two hours is my recommendation for that. All right, so now we can do that. We can see if there's changes. We have the indexing if you want to be able to search index. So this is good if you want to do um, unpublished posts, expired posts, drafted posts, things like that. So unpublished posts, that would show inside of um, the post status. And then we have indexing status. This is good if you don't see any posts, you can go through and click on this and index all of the posts again. So now that we have our fields, we can go back to general and then go to map. And now we can change this to from image to business logo. So that way it shows the business logo on the map instead of something completely different. Let's go, we have all of this information here. So right now we're not going to worry about adding products to this. I'll do that in another video just because that's a whole different monster by itself. But this is generally where you're gonna wanna do when it comes to adding your information, your fields. We'll work on templates on another photo just because that's again, another beast itself. And then here is all your filters that are suggested for that search orders and then going through the indexing and the indexing status. Thanks guys for joining and I will see you guys on the next one.